Hi, my name is Natasha Wright, and you are tuned in to Event Gems, where I will discuss all things event related and take a deep dive into creating concepts, marketing, and execution for your next biz event. My goal is to bring you industry experts who can help you properly monetize and effectively strategize so that you can make your business shine. Hi, my name is Natasha Wright, and you are tuned in to Event Gems, where I will discuss all things event related and take a deep dive into creating concepts, marketing, and execution for your next biz event. My goal is to bring you industry experts who can help you properly monetize and effectively strategize so that you can make your business shine. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Event Gems. I am your host, Natasha Wright, Chief Experience Curator at the Diamond Butterfly. And welcome to season two of Event Gems. Thank you so much for rocking with me, for listening. Please like, share, and subscribe so that you can be notified whenever we drop new episodes. I am super excited about this season because as a result of the pandemic, many of us have, have had to pivot or shift the way we do our business. But also if you're someone who used to plan in-person events as a way to boost your brand, make a greater impact or make money, then you've had to change the whole framework framework of how you do things. And so I just wanted us to focus on virtual events because it's speaking to the time that we're in and provide you with information about how you can better strategize, conceptualize, and profit from your virtual events. So I have some amazing guests who will be joining me as we go throughout the podcast, who will be sharing amazing information. These are powerhouse women who have done it. They've been in the trenches. They've come out with the gems and the jewels that we will be sharing with you. And so I am excited for us to navigate this process, navigate this journey, and navigate this new normal together. So thank you so much for being here. So. Just wanted to do quick housekeeping, I guess. So my goal is to make sure that these episodes drop every Monday. So, you know, if if you are subscribed, then you will get a notification that a new episode is out. Again, I do want you guys to talk to me. So if you have any questions or there's a topic that you think I should cover, please feel free to DM me on Instagram at Event Gems. Uh, Let me know what's on your mind. Let me know what questions you might have. And then we could just do some follow up episodes to support you on your journey. So, today I really wanted to talk about the event pathway. So, these are, you know, basically some of the steps that you would take when you're planning your virtual events. So, I just wanted to, you know, put together eight key things that you should definitely be looking out for, thinking about, ruminating on, and implementing as you uh, think about planning your virtual event. And so step one is what is your intention or your objective? I think intention guides us in whatever it is that we do. Even when we think about what it is that we want from our lives or from our business, we think about, well, what is the intention behind what it is that I'm doing? And so it allows you to set goals. It allows you to have a destination. It allows you to put metrics in place that will support you get into where it is that you need to go. And so when you think about what your intention is, your intention for planning the event could be you want to increase your email list. You want to stand out more as a speaker, gain greater credibility. You want to make money. You want to make an impact. And although some of those things that I mentioned might not seem like they're necessarily tangible, they can be tangible when you think about, let's say, for example, impact. When you think about you want to make a greater impact, you want to cause transformation through your event, then that could be measured by you sending your follow-up email after the event and just asking specific questions about, well, you know, how did this transform you? Do you feel like these are things that these were tips that were implementable, you know, and, and then just kind of like put them on a sliding scale and see what the feedback is from your attendees so that you can gauge whether or not you did make an impact. So when you think about your intention or you think about your objective, just remember that even if you do have something that might seem intangible, you can definitely figure out how to get those metrics in place in your follow-up. And that's one of the things that I did speak to 
Tanya about in one of the later episodes where we're going to be talking about email management, setting up your backend and your systems so that there is an easy, seamless process that doesn't have to be manual for you to do, you know, after the event is complete. So step number one, what is your intention or your objective for this event? So that's going to pretty much guide everything else that you do. So now you could build out and say, all right, I want to have 300 people on my email list. So then you can, you know, you start from there and you work your way backwards. Next, you're going to make sure that you put a date in place and say, this is the firm date for when the event is going to be. And then you plan everything from there with different guidelines for when certain tasks need to be completed, right? So step number two, who do you want to serve and who is your niche market? So that might be women service providers. It could be who are, you know, are women who are coaches, women of color who are coaches, moms who are coaches, beauty entrepreneurs. So there is, you know, you can get as specific as you want with that niche market so that you have an understanding of who those speakers might be, what your messaging is going to be. So that will definitely help support you. So, and if it's related to your business, you might already have some of this information already because it's really around like who is your ideal customer, who is your target customer. So that might already be some of the things that that you've worked on already. So it's just really like transferring that now to the event that you're working on. So who do you want to serve and or who is your niche market that you're going to be speaking to? So again, that's going to inform the marketing collateral, that's going to inform the follow-up email sequences that you send out, right? How are you going to be speaking to them so that they take action, whether it be to register or after the event to sign up for a program or, 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 or product or, you know, any of your services that you might have to offer. Step number three, create your attendee page and speaker sign up page. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. If you plan an event before, more likely than not, you're probably familiar with Eventbrite. So you can use Eventbrite as your attendee registration page. You can also, if you did want to have any customized questions, you can also set it up there as well. I think that's a great way for you to just dive deeper into who your audience is. Some of the custom questions that you might ask is, are you a business owner? Are you an aspiring business owner? What industry are you in? What, what is your age range? So those are some of the customized questions that you can ask so that you get a, a, a better idea of who those persons are that are actually signing up for the event. And then that will also allow you to know exactly how to speak to them. And probably you might even want to segment your audience based on, let's say you asked a question about what is your particular industry. So you might want to segment your audience based on the industry that they're in, in your email list, so that you can send out different communication to them. One of the things, again, I'm going to bring up this this episode because I thought it was so great, is when we were talking, when I was talking with Tanya about, you know, email management or email marketing, one of the things that she said is that personalized emails get better results, right? And so personalized emails are emails where you're personalizing the content to the recipient. So instead of sending your whole list, everything, you're going to segment your list and send and, and send out the relevant information to those persons, right? So again, think about where are you going to do your attendee sign up page? So that could be event, right? A lot of email management platforms allow you to actually create a landing page. So once the attendee registers, they could be entered into an email sequence you know, the first email that might go out is you thanking them for registering for the event, letting them know what are some things that they they can look forward to. You know, if if you even had an initial offer or a follow-up offer that you wanted to present to them, let's say it was a free event. And so now you're saying, hey, for a limited time, you can purchase this product at a lower price. So that those are some of the things that you can do as well. So you create your attendee page, but also you want to create your speaker signup page. And why is this important? It's really important because you want to be able to have everything for your speakers all in one place. You don't want to have to shuffle, hustle to find the information. You know, 
this is where speakers sign up. And, and you can use a, a, a something as simple as a Google form. There are different tools out there that you can utilize, but I think that most people are probably familiar with Google forms. So you could create this in Google form. You're going to be asking them for their name, their email addresses, their bio, their headshot. So everything is there in one spot. You can review all the information if you're going through a speaker selection selection process. And then from there, you have everything that you need for your marketing collateral and for you to contact them later on. So you don't have to scramble through your email, you know, searching here, searching there, searching everywhere. Everything is all in one place. And, you know, with an event, everything, there's a lot of different moving parts. So if you could simplify the process as much as possible for yourself, then do that because you will save yourself some headache, okay? So let's get into step number four. So step number four, you're gonna decide whether your your event is gonna be pre-recorded or live. So a lot of online events right now, you can you can pre-record the video. So let's say someone is not able, one of your speakers isn't able to make it on that on the specific date, you can pre-record the content and then that content could be uploaded, you know, to, to the platform. And it all depends on which particular platform you're using. But I just wanted to put that out there that that's also an option. If you're doing it live, then of course, it's going to, you know, pretty much follow the general standard of an event. And then that's another thing. Let's say you are, you're having a multi-day event in the speaker sign up form. You can also ask your speakers to let you know which date or time they're they're available. So at least you know when you can schedule people. And again, it makes your life easier, right? So again, you're going to decide, is it pre-recorded or is it live? And then if it is pre-recorded, you want to make sure that you have a scheduled deadline for when speakers should have their presentation to you so that you can upload that information to whatever platform you're using and give a deadline that is a week before what your actual deadline is because some people they're going to be late it's to be expected so it's not a reflection on you and your communication it's just is what it is so make sure that you give a deadline a week before your own deadline of when you'd like to really have that information in step number five which platform will you use so there are, as a result of the pandemic, there are a host of platforms right now that are available, but that are pretty, fairly easy to use that you can utilize. And a lot of them, they do allow you to upload pre-recorded videos, or you can do it live. And I'll share a checklist in the description for some of these platforms that you can utilize. But some of them are like Hopin, you have Virtual Summits, you have Run the World, you have Hey Summit. So there's a a lot of different platforms that you can utilize. You can certainly also host the event on your website or even let's say on a a private link on YouTube, or you can host it in a Facebook group. There's a lot of different ways where you could host it. Obviously for a Facebook group, you wouldn't be able to upload the pre-recorded video, but you could still do a watch party or you can use another platform where like a live reactant that you can upload your pre-recorded video and it streams as if it's live. So those are some options. So think about, you know, which platform you're going to use and just make sure that it allows for you to do what it is that you want to do. Step number six, what is your marketing launch sequence and email sequence? So you've had all of these things set out, right? You have your objective, you know who you're going to serve, you have your registration page done, you have your speakers who are signing up. So now it's going to be time for you to launch. It's time for you to get this event out there and let people know, let people know about it, let people get registered, let them get excited about it. So you want to make sure that you put together your marketing launch plan. And this is a this is just a way for again for you to not pull your hair out while you're planning the event. <laughs> if you have everything beforehand, then it's you know pretty much you could create your content. You could you know maybe take about two hours or so over the weekend, create your content for social media, create your content for your Facebook group, and then you know write out your email sequences 
So that's going to be the welcome email. Once they sign up, what's the email that they're going to get? And you want to make sure that you're communicating with them throughout the process, you know, because if someone registered pretty early on, you want them to still be excited about attending the event, you know, as you get closer to the event, especially if it's a free event. So they might have registered and lost interest, didn't save it on their calendar. But if you're continuing to send them information in their in their email, letting them know, hey, we added this new speaker. Hey, we added this new topic. Hey, uh, we just brought on this new sponsor. Here are some things that they're going to be offering to you. Then they will continue to be excited about the event. They will share the event with their friends. So you want to make sure that you incorporate your email sequence and your marketing sequence for social media. Plan those things out. I love using Trello as a project management tool. So I can pretty much just put everything in there, the dates that I want, the content that I want, and then use different scheduling uh, platforms. I, I love Planoly for social media. Uh, I love the fact that it allows me to see what my feed is going to look like. When you schedule it, it also shares your content to Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as well. So step number seven, where will you build your community? So if you listen to one of the previous episodes that I had with Sade Y. Adu, one of the things that she said is if you're planning a virtual event, you want to make sure that you have an adjacent group. So as soon as they register, they're going to get something saying, thank you so much for registering. Be sure to join us in our Facebook group. So, you know, that Facebook group could work in tandem with your email marketing sequence to really excite people about the event, have them sharing information about the event. And if you do decide to use a Facebook group, then, you know, a great thing that you could do throughout the process is to maybe do bonus trainings before the event. Maybe have some of the speakers come in and give some teaser information or or do a, a quick interview with them. So I think that, you know, those are some of the ways that you can utilize the Facebook groups to continue to build and nurture your community before the event starts. And then step number eight, what is your follow-up sequence and what is your offering going to be, right? I think a lot of times once the event is done, it's like, that's it, <laughs> right? But there is still a, a greater opportunity for you to now follow up and ask for feedback, number one. So you want to ask for feedback, see what people thought, how if, if they enjoyed the event, and, and see what type of feedback they provide you with, because that will allow you and inform you, you know, on what you might need to tweak as you go forward and you do it another time, right? You also want to think about, well, what is my offering going to be to my attendees? Am I going to, you know, give some type of discount on my services as a result? You want to think about the fact that they're warm right now. Those leads are warm. They've been in your community for a while. They're in your Facebook group for a while. They've been on your email list. They've been nurtured. They, they attended the event. They enjoyed it. They're still invigorated by it. And so now this is a great opportunity for you to now present an offer. And you're not going to present it right away, but you know, give yourself a few, give yourself after a few emails to present that offer to them. Or if you don't necessarily have an offer, let's say a service that you're pro providing or a course that you're providing but this is an event that you want to do annually, then this is also a great opportunity to say, hey, make sure that you register for the event next year at this discounted rate and give a super, super discounted rate. That's a great way for you to already start filling up the virtual, <laughs> the quote unquote virtual seats and also be able to generate some additional income after the event has, has ended. So those are my eight steps. This is the event pathway. These are some of the things that you definitely want to be thinking about as you plan your virtual event. We're going to get into a lot more with the speakers, and I am really excited for you guys to, to hear this information, digest it, implement it, and go forth and be great, trailblazers. Thank you so much once again for being with me on this journey. I hope you stick around. And please like, share, and subscribe to be notified of new episodes. And also follow me over on Instagram. Follow me at Event Gems on Instagram. DM me if you have any questions or if there's any topic that you'd like for me to discuss. 
And until next time, I am your partner in shine. I will see you soon. Bye.